Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Healthy Relationship Series Episode 4. My name is Bjorde Dafredi, and I am just bowled over by what God has been doing for the last three episodes of Healthy Relationship Series. Um, if you've been watching, let us know in the comments what you've enjoyed, which episode has been your favorite, and just anything that you want us to talk about when it comes to blended families, getting out of toxic relationships, um, starting a new relationship, and everything we'll be talking about in this episode. So disclaimer, we will not be talking about co-parenting today, but if you attend the Ignite uh, Relationship Conference, you will definitely learn a lot about co-parenting. So today in the virtual studio with me, I have two of my best aunties, Pastor Tega and Pastor um, Abby Olariwaju. Welcome, us. Thank you so much for having us. So I'll do a it's mini a introduction. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Um, I'll do a mini introduction. Um, Pastor Tega is one of our pastors at Holy Ghost Christian Center. She is a resident auntie and mom and grandma to <laughs> all of our babies. Um, she's always a blessing, always with a good word, always with a prayer. And if you want to see her face almost every day, you can check out our Morning Dew uh, prayer mornings on Facebook and on Zoom for Holy Ghost Christian Center, North uh, America. Um, welcome. <laughs> Was that good, Pastor Tiger? Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Thank you um, so much. Thank you. I'm happy to be here and I thank God for what he's doing in this season. And thank you so much for what God is doing through you. It's been a blessing. It's an amazing work. God bless your home. Amen. Amen. And I will be introducing Pastor Abby or Pastor Bimbo. You might know her as Pastor Bimbo Olangwaju. Uh, she's a doctor, so she's in the health industry. Um, she also has a psych background. She's a mom and uh, a wife as well. She's always coming through with the word when it comes to parenting in this season. And um, it's going to be a, a great episode having that on as well. So if you're watching, now is the time to share this link and let your friends and family know that we are on. It's going to be one hour and then we are out of here. All right. So we are starting. Welcome to the fourth episode of our Healthy Relationship Series. For anyone who is wondering, there are only going to be five episodes. So next Saturday is going to be the last episode of the Healthy relationship series for this year at least. So we're going to start off with a question for <laughs> Pastor Tega. So Pastor Tega, um, what, what is your thoughts about the relationship of marriage? Because today um, a, a lot of people are, have a, a, a lot of thoughts that they are broadcasting very loudly. Um, some people say marriage isn't important. Some people say it doesn't do anyone any good. Some people say it's just an agreement on paper and that it's better for us to shelve it. It's an old institution. Um, what does God think about marriage? Let's just clarify. That. Okay. Thank God. Um, there's something you just said that some people said is an old institution. I would say marriage is, um, is a divine institution established by God right from beginning when god created everything beautiful the bible said he made man and he find that man was not it's not okay for man to be by himself and he not created a woman so people will always say from different backgrounds people will always believe or different view of marriage but i am here to let you know that marriage is not just a companionship but it's an, it's, it's an institution that God created, God established for, for the companionship is part of it, but for recreation, for, for a continuity of what God have established. So marriage is sacred, marriage is divine, it's not a contract. So that is why marriage is not meant for people that are not ready. Marriage, the Bible say a man, marriage is meant is made for mature people, it's not for children, it's for adults. It's not you can be 20 and be an adult, you can be 50 and be a child. Mm -hmm. So marriage is wow. divine and is established by God. It's something that we should take very serious. 
Wow. Thank you so for saying that. That stuck out to me. You said you can be 20 and be an adult. You can be 50 and be a child. So maturity mm -hmm. is very important when it comes to marriage. And the next question is for Pastor Bimbo, um, Pastor Abby. So let what, 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 just tell us a bit more when it comes to maturity mindsets in, in when it comes to the, the, the institution of marriage, the place that has. Thank you very much. Um, just like Pastor Tega have said, maturity has nothing to really do with age. Yes, age could play a bit of a factor there, but it's more about the experience of life, what you've gone through, how well you are matured, you know, in your mindset and how you are able to handle things. So you could see a 50 year old, like she said, behaving, you know, like a 20 year old. And you could see a 25, 30 year old guy that is more and lady that more experience and more have a better outlook to like. So I think it's more about how much you have been able to develop yourself and how much experience that you have. So when we talk about the issue of marriage and maturity, when it comes to the place of marriage, you know, it means that you are actually ready for what you are getting into. You have all the necessary tools. And, you know, when I say that, I say that with all caution, because the truth is we can't have all the tools, but at least we can get ready, you know, the, some basic things. There are some things called fundamentals of marriage. So at least you want to have those fundamental things. You want to know that, you know, what you want. You want to know how you want your home to run. You know, you want to know like what kind of uh, parenting style do you want to go into and how do you, you know, plan to like execute all those things. So you having all of that, marriage is beyond just thinking about, okay, I want to get married and, you know, you have all this idea in your head of how you want the home to run. Those are great, but that don't just fall on people's lap. You have to actually work it out. You know, what plan, I want a home that is, you know, nice. I want a home that is uh, peaceful, what are you going to do to make your home peaceful? Because there is going to be time that situations of life will come. There are going to be time that, you know, the winds will blow. There's going to be the wilderness, the wilderness experience. How do you tend to navigate it? Or how do you plan to navigate it? And the truth of the matter is we can't navigate any of those things without the word of God. At least when it comes to Christian marriage, maturity, like I say, it's not just the, the age, it's not just the mind, but be allowing the word of God to also help us and the situation of life that we find ourselves. Thank you so much for saying that. I love that you put out Yeah, that I just want to, okay. No, no, go ahead. Pastor. Thank you. Yeah, I yeah, I just want to, um, what the Pastor Abbey said, that is really great. I just want to say, that is why it's the ability for you to be able to connect to the owner of the marriage. I know people right. always say that, like my father and the Lord, Dr. Joseph, will always say that marriage is where you go into and they will give you a certificate when you've not graduated. Mm -hmm. That means you're going there to connect with the owner of the, the establishment, the owner of the institution, looking onto him all the time for direction because um, marriage is not for kids because kids, they always throw tantrums. Mm -hmm. They always throw tantrums. So when you face with those challenges that Pastor Laron, you just uh, we just talked about, being matured, that your ability to be able to connect to the maker, your ability to be able to look into the manual, which is the word of God, mm -hmm. your guide. And uh, Dr. Amos Fenwa said the other time that uh, it's like a triangle that God is on top and both of you are, are below looking onto Jesus, mm -hmm. which is the owner of the marriage. Yes, with that to be able to run a peaceful home. We're not going to sit here that uh, marriage is going to be a smooth a ride because it. it's different people from different backgrounds, different mm -hmm. perspectives, different cultural beliefs. Even Christians alone, we all have different beliefs. So we're not coming together as an adult in the Lord, not by age, like matured adult in God. Mm -hmm. So I know people that are not Christians, they also get married, but uh, there are also principles that guide them, but we're talking about Christian marriage right here. Mm -hmm. Every Christian marriage, if we, if we can recognize and realize this, starting from first, that's why you cannot get married to everybody, because everybody mm -hmm. can be your husband, because the person is tall, is black, is red, he can speak in tongues, he is in the choir. It's not everybody that has to be in your marriage. Like uh, somebody once said, I marry from your tribe. You have to marry from your tribe. What are your beliefs? What are the things that you believe in? You have to be able to go to God in prayers, connect with God, seek counsel so that you can connect to the right husband or the right wife as God help us. Amen. Thank you, Ma. Thank you so, so much. So yes. I guess I guess the maturity comes from not how you handle situation in the marriage, right? 
So it's not that, like we, I, I rightly said before, it's not like you won't have challenges. But when those challenges mm -hmm. come, how do you resolve it? How do you yes. handle it? How do you yes. allow the Holy Spirit to lead you? Yes. You know, do you just act based on your intuition, like, okay, this is how I feel and I'm just going to act? Mm. Or do you actually take it back to the owner of the marriage and say, mm. you know, and that's why what, something that Pastor Tega said that is very profound, like marrying from your tribe. When we mm. say tribe, we're not talking about your, you know, your ethnicity. Yes, thank you for the mm. disclaimer. Right, we're talking yes. about tribe in, in times of Christian, you know, Christian dumb. Because the Bible actually said we should not be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. So the problem with you marrying outside of your, you know, common word is that yes. you don't speak the same language. And when issues happen, then who are you going to go report that person to? But if the person is a child of God, you know, spirit filled, if they mess up, then you can go to their father and say, Lord, no, this is what this man has done. This is what this woman have done. And the one, and if that person is truly a child of God, God will touch their heart and, you know, help yes. you make it right. Yes. But if you marry somebody that is not, you know, connected to God, it, it can't even hear God speak, then... You know, he doesn't have his number. Yeah, that's, <laughs> the thunder right. has to strike before he knows that something is wrong. That's um, right. Can I, Thank can you, I? Dr. Abbe, for that clarification of uh, marrying from your tribe. Because um, in terms of belief, that's what I meant. Like, in terms of yeah. belief. Like, there are some people in church, but they don't believe in paying tight. And you, those are the, just as you said earlier on, that you have to sit down and uh, spell out what you need in the marriage. Yeah, I've seen people like some women, they want to give tight in church. They have to hide and pay their tight. Mm -hmm. Some people, and these are people that went to the altar and got married. They and, say, vice, and vice versa. Yes. Vice versa. Yes. Vice versa. Vice versa. That they can't, yes. They yes, husband or wife, vice versa. Yes, goes yeah. both ways. It goes both ways. Yeah. Like believe how we're going to raise our children. There are some people believe that it's okay to expose the children. Like what they said last week was so very, very profound as well. That mother for your kids. That's right. Mother for your parent. That is, I believe in so much in modeling parenting. Mm -hmm. Don't don't say it. Do it. Do it. Do it. At it, and the kids will always work. You can talk all you can. It's what you do that they will emulate, right? So, but some parents believe that it's okay for kids to go wild. Why some parents believe that it's not okay for kids to? So, those are the belief that you have to come on. You might be from Caribbean, you might be from Nigeria. Both of you are in the same tribe if you have the same belief. That's right. Thank you, Ma. Um, okay, so I'm going to also throw this in there. So before at least when when i was younger and they would say um you know don't be unequally yoked with an unbeliever i think what people thought that meant at the time was if you're a christian don't marry someone who's not a christian that was the, the general thought but from what you're saying now you're saying it's not just about christian non-christian it is what are your fundamental beliefs about what God has said concerning how you should live your life. If you marry someone that does not believe in that, does I just want to clarify, does is that person an unbeliever? <laughs> Pastor Bimba, this question is first for you, then Pastor Tega. Okay. Thank you so much. So um, to my understanding, when the Bible talks about unbelievers, unbeliever means unbeliever. As long as uh, whoever does not believe in Christ and the fundamental principle of Christianity. So, you know, faith, you know, peace, long suffering, all those fruits of the spirit. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe in them, if you don't believe, even if you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, and then you don't believe in every other basic Christian, you know, Christian principle, then you, you probably still have some work to do. So when the Bible talks about unbeliever, I, you can be a Christian. I mean, in the world, like you, you can be a churchgoer, you can be religious. That don't make you a believer. That don't make you uh, a born again Christian, as we use it in the contemporary world. Yeah. Yeah. So Christian, anybody can be a Christian. There are so many other denominations that call themselves Christian, but you have to know: Do you guys both believe in the same thing? Do you believe in the person of the Holy Spirit? Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe in God? You know, I mean, different religions that also call themselves Christian. So you have to ask yourself that question. So, but it, as far as I'm concerned, I wouldn't cons consider everybody. Um, a believer, if they don't have Christ and they don't believe in the fundamental okay. principle. Thank you, my Pastor Tega. So the, the question is going to you next, but um, I want to add something else to it. So I know, I, I know personally of a couple that one one of them 
was uh, we used to speak in tongues and the other did not believe, came from a denomination where that is not a thing. Like, in fact, it's a wrong thing to do. And that used to cause problems. So it meant that one person, when they want to pray, has to go hide in the bathroom and kind of pray quietly. But they're both Christians. So for just for people who are in similar situations, what, what would you what would you advise? Mommy, you want to go first? <laughs> are, you, are you giving it to me? No, I just want to know. It's for you. No, it's for you. You want to, okay. you want to pause? So, you want uh, to... so okay. that's where that's where comes Mushwa. We've said earlier on that marriage is not for kids. That's where comes Mushwa understanding and respect. Right? And these are the things that, like Pastor Abe said, these are the things that we have to spell out before we get married. You cannot just wake up overnight that you're getting married. If we believe in Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, and his resurrection, if you believe in that, that means automatically you believe in the Holy Spirit. So if you believe in the Holy Spirit as a Christian, speaking in tongues should not be your problem. Right? So I was we saying the other day about speaking in tongues. You might not desire it, but you see people that are speaking in tongues. You don't have, you don't have to be a problem. So in this case, if your partner is speaking in tongues and you are a Christian, it shouldn't be a problem to you. If it's a problem, I will advise the person that is speaking in tongues, please go on your knees and begin to pray that the Holy Spirit should arrest your husband. The Holy Spirit should reveal himself to him. Because, or wife, who, who, vice versa, if it's the wife or the woman, because it goes both ways. Actually, has somebody uh, said it of recent, and I don't like those people that speak in tongues. It didn't bother me because the person is from Catholic Church. I, I'm sorry, with all due respect. I said, okay, maybe that is what is his own understanding. But if you are a Christian, like from the Pentecostal world, speaking in tongues is part of our belief. And if you have a spouse that is that is having problem towards that, I, I pray that uh, you take it to God. There's nothing God cannot do. Amen. And if you can do some more, more mm -hmm. lessons or needs, maybe by opening the Bible, show, show your partner in the Bible in a very peaceful way, maybe that can also help as well. So, did I answer the question? Yeah. Well, yes, you did. Yeah. If you, I Ron. can just add to that. Um, uh, yes, Pastor Bimbo, please give me a, a half a second. Okay. <laughs> so if you're watching us, you have any question, we're talking about um, uh, marriage today, remarriage, uh, coming out of divorce, uh, overcoming uh, toxic relationships and overcoming betrayal or heartbreak. If you have any questions to that, in that window, please drop it in the comments. And if we are able to get to it, we will. Okay. Pastor Bimba, please go ahead. <laughs> yes, so I was just going to add um, to what Pastor Tega just said. Um, you know, when you have, you know, just like you said, before you get into that, those are things that should be looked into and outlined. And if for whatever reason that wasn't done, you know, before, you, let's say now you're already in the marriage, you know, you already found yourself in that marriage. So you, we can't say you should leave your husband, obviously, and that's not mm -hmm. even enough mm -hmm. reason to leave a man mm -hmm. or a woman. Mm -hmm. So at this point, what do you do? It means whichever way you guys are still not on the same, you know, level. You are not operating on the, right, on the same wavelength. Even if you're married to a non-Christian, you know, how do you handle that kind of a thing? It's all about balancing. It's all about balancing because I actually know of a couple that have this same situation. One is from a religion where they don't believe in speaking in tongues, and they are Christians also. And the other one is from a Pentecostal, you know, religions. And they religion, they're still married. Uh, of course, they have different of, of opinion on things. But I would say be, be balanced, you know, in what you do. So you have a spouse that don't believe in that. Find a way to do your thing until they come to the knowledge of, you know, Christ. Because you both share that home, you know, you still have to respect their boundaries. And because sometimes I also feel like some people could overdo things. You can't over pray, but if you are out there, you are, you know, you're shouting, you're making, you know, the, your spouse may have problem with that. So if that is the situation that you need to maybe control yourself, have a place for, of, of prayer, lock your door and do your prayer. And continue to leave that woman, continue to leave that man, you know, to the hand of God until their heart is arrested for Christ. So I would just say it's all about, you know, balancing and being respectful of each other. Thank you so much. Okay, so we're going into the first question that we received before, you know, we went live. Um, and this question is for you, Pastor Vimbo. Uh, it says, 
if someone who went through a difficult childhood is interested in me, so that's from the person, is it wrong to insist that they start therapy before I agree to date them? So the person is saying, you know, some, some, someone is interested in, in, in dating them, but, but they already have the understanding that this person went through a difficult childhood, like when they were growing up, maybe something traumatic happened. Mm -hmm. Is it wrong to say, before I say yes to you, go to therapy first? Mm. Wow. Can that's someone a, insist on therapy? Can it be a condition? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, you know, when we talk about trauma, trauma is a very serious, you know, mental health issues that we can just put to the back burner. You know, if anybody goes through trauma, it's something that's very, that can actually change the life of a person if care is not taken. And, you know, seeking help when necessary is very, very important. However, I don't think that should be a criteria, you know, for dating someone. So who knows, maybe God is bringing you to their life so that you can help them because they might not even recognize that they have that trauma. They might know that they have the trauma, but don't even recognize that they need help. So if you just tell them, oh yeah, you have a very rough you know, childhood, I, can, uh, I can't go out with you, except you go get help. Then you already kind of shut the door. You know, they, they just feel like, oh yeah, maybe I'm not good enough. So you actually mm -hmm. compounded the trauma than you know, necessary. But if you relate with them in love, even if deep within you, you know that, okay, I'm not going to go too seriously into this relationship until this person gets help. Why don't we just, okay, let's just, you know, keep it open for now. You know, I want to see how things go. Let's keep it as, you know, on friend, friendship zone and begin to talk about, help them talk about what they've gone through. Because sometimes they might not necessarily need a professional uh, therapist. Maybe they just need to talk to somebody and get it out. And the best therapist we know, you know, is the person of the Holy Spirit. So if we if they have contact with that person, then it can actually really help them. Yeah, I think giving them that opportunity to share their opinion, to share their what they have gone through and see where they are at. Because also what whatever level they are at at that trauma, you know, level, it's it's very important. If they are at the point of where they're still like um denier or they're still like uh, even though you say it's childhood, they might still they might still have block it over and they're not thinking about it. So that would depend. But if they have gotten to a point where they themselves know that they need help, they themselves know that, okay, this is hindering me, I need to get help, then maybe they'll be more open to you. But if you are asking for that to be your criteria for dating someone, I would say I don't think it's a legitimate point, except the Holy Spirit is telling you that that person needs to deal with that first before you go ahead. But if the Holy Spirit already gave you a go ahead, then prayerfully help the person out. Um, Pastor Tega, so this this question has come up, this particular question I want to ask you has come up before, and I think we wanted to raise it last week, but there was no time, so I'm going to throw it to you now because you are a pastor. Um, so for people who are, let's call them mature singles, maybe they, they, they've been in relationships in the past, they are of a certain age, um, or they've been married before and it ended. And they say, you know what, if I want to date someone in the same church with me, why do we need to tell the pastor we're grown? Like, oh, we're not kids. Why are we still this mature? We still have to like, oh, inform the pastor and inform leadership that, oh, just so you know, we are in a committed relationship. What 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 would your answer be to that? Mm. What 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 is the what's the pro for doing that for informing leadership? Yeah. Um, I will advise that they should see um, the leadership. Uh, before I answer that, I just want to uh, circle back a little bit on what Mommy just said. What she said was just so wonderful. I believe last episode or last week's Saturday, they were talking about marriage counseling. So if you have somebody that you know that have those trauma, those are the things that they actually address in marriage counseling. So if those are your concern, you take them to the marriage counselor. You see that in the process of talking about it, just like what mommy said, maybe in the process of talking about it, the person will begin to get healing. So now brings it home. You are a, an adult. There's something they call accountability. That is why you need the leadership to know about your relationship. So that you, they will guide you. 
nobody is an island. I will advise 100 percent that don't after all, if you are in a church, that means you believe in the pastor, you believe in the leadership. That is why you're still there. So if you believe that they are your spiritual parent and you want to do something, in evil, traditionally, spiritually, it's always good to allow your parent to know your move. So if somebody should tell you, though, I don't want to tell the pastor, is a red flag. Mm. Yes, it is a red flag. Because I've seen cases like that where people abuse, abuse can come out of that. That means the person is somebody is hiding something. They don't want the other person to know. But the moment you bring it to the leadership, at least, at least tell your pastor. Let your pastor know that, okay, I want to remarry. This is the person I want to marry. Let them guide you spiritually. The ones you cannot see, God will reveal to them because they are the watchmen. There are people that are watching over you. What you can see, they will see. So I will advise you 100%, don't make it secret. If it's a marriage, I know you are an adult, you are grown, but don't make it secret. It's for accountability purposes. Because in any relationship, if nobody, if you, I think somebody once said that uh, if you are getting married to somebody that does not fear anybody, that does not have respect for anybody, I will advise you don't go into such kind of relationship. Because if something happened, because we don't know it all, the times like what mommy said, time of wilderness will surely come in marriage. Those are the things. So but when they remember that, okay, pastor is aware of this, he, he kind of bring like a check. He kind of bring like the balance to it. He, he kind of set up people that you have somebody that you look onto, you have somebody that you have respect for. I don't know if I answer that way, but my answer would yes. be like, please, tell your pastor, let your pastor know, don't hide it. Not only, let's get a mentor. We don't know it all. Get a mentor. It's a new, it's a new territory. You might think that you've married before, but this is a new person you're meeting. You might be adults. It's new person. Get somebody to to be accountable to. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, um, in ministry, you know, one of the things that I've seen, I've seen, you know, quite a little in my little years, you know, ministry, and um, people are not always what they appear to be. Mm. So that's one of the reasons why it's very important that you, you know, if involve the leadership. I've heard of situation uh, where a brother is proposing to like three different sisters mm. in the same church. And uh, if you don't take it to the leadership, how will you know that they're already in a relationship with somebody and they're coming to you again? So there's an adage in my language that says a needle that has thread is likely not going to get lost. Mm. Why? Because you know, you you know, you if you can see the needle, you can at least track it with the track. Yeah. So if you as a sister or as a brother that is looking into getting into a relationship with or someone, you're not proud enough to say, okay, these are my these are my spiritual parents. The same way you want them to meet your parents, they should meet your spiritual parents. And as a matter of fact, they should actually meet your spiritual parents first before they meet your meet your biological parents. Um, I remember when we were you know getting into courtship in those days, I don't you know, I'm not sure if singles to do that. You can't even go and propose to a sister straight. You have to go talk to their pastors first. And then they can give you a green light, oh, if she's available or not, then you can go talk to the sister. So no brother actually will walk straight to the sister then. I mean, ideally in a church setting. But I know these days, you know, we just go yeah. talk to ourselves and keep yeah. things moving. We're moving with the time, but at least, you know, it would make sense for you to make sure that leadership are involved. For your own protection just like pastor said for accountability purposes so you know this person is truly who they said they are at least they are not married you know they to the best of the, you know, the knowledge of the leadership and also the the two of you will become more careful in the sense that now the church is aware so you can't just do anything right you can't just do anything you can't just present yourself anyhow so at the end of the day it's for your own good if you know if they're saying let the leadership knows about it it's majorly for our own good Thank you, ma. Yeah. Can, I, can I just say something okay. that just struck me as mommy was talking about uh, these days, kids? We will advise you, no matter your age, <laughs> before you propose to anybody, get the leadership involved. It's always better. It's always, it does not matter. The, the marriage is marriage. It's still the same principle. I have the opportunity of even talking to some of these young, young men. I ask them, is the same quality that our old father wants? Is the same thing they want? 
Yeah, when when they finish, when it comes to marriage, everything. yes, I've like, interviewed a lot of the young guys. What do you want for a woman? How do you want a woman? Is the same quality that of old? Is the same thing they desire? Some of them are managing marriage, so please don't be deceived by the enemy. Marriage still remains the same principle that God has used to establish it right from the one. Thank you, Pastor Terga. So before we go ahead, look, it's going to be a very interesting conversation. If you're watching, share the link. If you have a question, drop it in the comments. You know what? Let us even know what you're thinking about this episode so far. Like, are you enjoying it? What is your favorite part? What has been your favorite part? Uh, so we're going to go to a commercial break because Ignite is coming April 5th and 6th, and we want you to know the details. All right people that you need to meet you have not met them i speak over your life after this meeting there will be a miracle you will connect people that matter to your next level prepare to embark on a transformative journey of self-discovery and empowerment at ignite relationship conference this year's theme regeneration god's technology for restoration this will be an explosive two days event Designed to kindle your passion for healthy relationships. You don't marry a man whose leadership you cannot submit to for the rest of your life. Because there is no point saying yes, I do to him. Then you get into marriage, then you say, you know, he cannot lead. What were you thinking when you were courting? Because marriage is a lifetime. Wedding is an event. So don't get fixated about wedding. Personal growth and financial prosperity. So for this conference, we want to learn purpose. Then we are fed. Some of you that are yet to marry, we are fed where you marry. We are fed the programs you do. We are fed your career in life. We are fed where you live. We are fed how you talk because your purpose is very important. Then you want to learn from this conference, your capacity. There will be a diverse lineup of speakers, facilitators, and experts in various fields, which will include panel discussions. There's a breakup in relationship or when um, courtship fail, it is always an opportunity for you to evaluate yourself. You have the opportunity to explore a wide range of topics from nurturing relationship with God to cultivating self-care practices in order to deepen your connection with your partner, family, and community. You'll also gain invaluable insights into effective financial management and guidance to a purposeful path for your career. This event will be hosted by the Holy Ghost Christian Center, North America, located at 1323 Burnett Avenue, Union, New Jersey, on Friday, April 5th at 6.30 p.m., and Saturday, April 6th at 8.30 a.m. Don't miss your chance to be a part of this free, life-changing event. For more information, please check out our website at www.hccnj.org or follow us at hgccnj on Instagram and Facebook. Reserve your spot today and be transformed at Ignite! Wow. I am so... I cannot wait for what God is going to do at Ignite. So if you are watching... If you know someone who should be at Ignite, please just let them know. April 5th and 6th is taken. So it's Friday evening and then Saturday morning to afternoon. You're going to be blessed. And just know that the prayer team, they are praying along. We know that people are coming and they want questions answered. God wants to bless us. Whether it's a relationship conference or a revival, you know, whenever you walk through our doors or you're watching us, you connect with us on social, God is going to answer your prayers. So we're moving on to our next question. And I think, um, Pastor Tega, you'll go first with this one. And it is, how do I deal with lingering resentment from how my spouse handled issues with my kids early on in our marriage? This is a second marriage for both of us. Hmm. Who's going first? Pastor Tega is going first. <laughs> resentment, resentment. Yeah from um, previous marriage and second. This is the second relationship. No, no, no. I think the question is, the person is, is, in, a, is in a second, second marriage. Second marriage, yeah. And the way the, and at the beginning of this second marriage, their spouse handled, they feel like their spouse handled their own children in a- From another, from the second, yes, first marriage? from their first marriage in a, in, a, in a way that they didn't like. So that mm -hmm. has passed now, but they are still feeling, it still affects the way they they feel. They still mm -hmm. resent how it was handled. There's new spouses handling the children. Handled the at yes. the beginning. Handled at the beginning. Oh. oh my God, that comes healing. I pray healing and uh, forgiveness. Love. Yeah. 
forgiveness and healing. They must have forgiven, but the, the hurt, the pain is still there. Mm. So I will say, why not communicate it okay. to start with? Because sometimes um, what we believe or maybe some resentment we're holding is not actually what is really happening. And sometimes uh, the way the people behave might be for, that's what we're talking about belief, might be that is their own belief, but you're not perceiving it from the another angle. And one thing I know is that um, step step children, step parents, step husband, they will always be like a uh, uh, bot. In, in no matter how they treat each other, they, more, they will always be a bot. The only thing I know that handles that or uh, clarifies any action from such relationship is really deep love for each other and deep love for God. From that place, you'll be able to act in a very transparent way that uh, there is nothing. In, in that kind of situation, you keep explaining yourself. That's where comes the communication. You keep explaining yourself. Every single action that you take, keeps, you keep explaining yourself. This is you, We discuss things. In that case now, uh, I believe that we have to be very sensitive as well. So in this case, if I should be in that kind of place, I will advise you that why not um, communicate it? When you maybe the first attempt you're making um, might not be really okay. You can just leave it like that. Okay, I just feel like this is what is hurting me. Um, and I don't want it to affect our relationship. Um, I really love you. I want, I want to move on. This is, I'm stuck. So this is what you did and uh, it's really affecting me. I want to get off it. And uh, you that is having the resentment as well. And, um, and here I come again. Um, as a Christian, why not ask the Holy Spirit? Like Pastor People said the other time that the best therapist that you can ever think about is the Holy Spirit. It works. It works. When you constantly go and meet him that uh, I'm feeling resentment, resentment i'm still feeling some hurt i'm still feeling some bitterness i still have some boundaries for what my spouse did to my kids um i know that he didn't mean it that way but this is how i'm still feeling just help me to get get over it get over it so when or maybe i want to communicate this with him i will advise you don't just go and meet him like that because it might bring more hurt it might even revive the wound uh you might see that okay because of what i said that's where it comes to believe again but that's not what i meant is that what is that how you are behaving is that what you're holding somebody once told me if this thing you're doing if jesus gonna you will go to hell and the person did not even know i'm telling you that's how it is the person did not even know where i'm coming from that's regular even outside of marriage the person did not even know where i'm coming from it does not even know my heart but say this is what you're doing and it's going to take you to hell i just laugh over it i just say because that is not really what i meant that is not what i'm doing that's not my relationship with god so i will advise let me go back again communicate it but before you go uh have the conversation thanks for the help of the holy spirit to help you don't move Christians, we are Christians, don't underplay on the Holy Spirit. He can help us when we take anything to him in prayers. If you're telling me that everything is Holy Spirit, that means what uh, he cancels all of your belief. If you believe one aspect of the Bible, please believe the help of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said it's the comforter that he has sent to help us. So before you have that conversation to have the healing, because you need to heal so that God can open more doors. With that resentment alone, you must have been closing some doors that God have for your marriage, your new marriage. So you want to get you want to get healing. You want to get it off your chest. Yeah, I think maybe mommy would have something more to say, say about that. But well, after I, think that, I think you actually took the word right out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. um, resentment is a very serious thing, and it can be an hindrance to yeah. our prayer, to our own life, our own Christian work. Mm -hmm. So number one, anything that is going to prevent that that's going to create a, a barricade between you and your God. You don't want that mm -hmm. because that's one of the tools that the enemy uses. And he already knows that there's, yeah, he already, he already see that there's a loophole and he's trying to capitalize on that. One, to destroy your prayer life, your spiritual life. Second, to, to destroy your home. Because if that case is not handling well, handled well, you can actually mess up your relationship with your spouse. Because it's, it all depends on where they are coming from. And the hurt we're talking about, um, you as a mother, is it just a perceived hurt? 
I know as mother, we have our instinct and no mother should, you know, stay there and allow their child to be bullied or to be abused. But, but then the question is, do you perceive that abuse because, or you think, oh, be, well, he's doing that because he's not a father or that man or that woman will have done the same thing if that child was their own child. Yes. So, yeah, those are two different things. I, I've had situation where I acted with my children that I know they probably would think something like, oh, is this woman really a mom? And I've had situation where my mom said some things to me and I said to her straight, I said, mommy, if you were my mother-in-law, I would think you're a bad woman with this statement that you've made. She, what she said was factual, but it was too, like, you know. Direct. Came, right, too direct. And I'm like, if you, I said, mother-in-law, if you say that to your, you know, son's wife, I said, it's not going to be taken lightly. So, in that case, you know, if I if, if if it's not my mom, imagine if that statement was said by my mother-in-law, I would have interpreted it in a different way. Mm. But because it's my mother saying it now, I was able to like, you know, You're able to give her grace and give her grace. So mm. maybe the man is not coming from that place of wanting, or the woman, you know, the spouse. Let me put it that way, of wanting to hurt the child. Maybe they're just, you know, disciplined. Maybe they're just, yeah, they could be a little overboard. You know, we know that. We're not, I'm not disputing that fact, but first analyze the situation. Is it coming from a place of wanting to maltreat the child or is just the best they know how to do? So if it has been established that it was an abuse for real, then you should have a conversation with the help and the leading of the Holy Spirit. Because like what I said, that can break a home. It can break a marriage if it's not handled well. So pray, make sure that you have a go ahead and make sure it's it's always advisable that you are not upset when you are having that conversation, because that things can go out of you know whack if you if you are if you are not in a in a stable mental state. So make sure you are stable mentally. Make sure you are ready to have a conversation. Be ready that the person is going to get defensive, and be ready to know how to de-escalate if you want to get to the end of that conversation. If not, you guys are going to end up in a shouting battle, and nothing is going to be resolved. But if you already know all of those things are going to happen, the first thing is, you know, there's nobody that is caller that is going to say, oh, yeah, I like it that way. No, you are likely going to want to first defend yourself. Allow them to do that and then help them see where you are coming from. That, okay, this is what happened. This is what I'm trying to do. You know, this has been hurting me for a little bit. I want to be able to move past it and I just want us to discuss it. So now they know that you are wanting to resolve it. You wanted to resolve the issue, not to like, accuse them. I, I hope I'm making sense to us. Yes, yes. So, you know, we should make sure that that is very clear. Once we make the intention of our conversation clear, it becomes easier. And that is a style that I like to use when I have to talk to my husband. Tell him what I'm, I, I, I'm trying to say and what I'm not saying. So that way you can actually hear and listen to what I have to say. If not, once you come from a place of you're trying to attack or you're trying to make a point, then you see that they, they become de defensive. But when you allow them to see where you're coming from, that I'm trying to have a closure, I'm trying to heal and move on from this point, then it's, they are more receptive to you. And they can explain why they did what they do. And once they explain, let the explanation be good enough. As long as it's not something that has to do with like, you know, major abuse, you know, abuses, like I said, and those are different things. You both might need to get help, you know, get therapy or whatever you need for that. Regular and, parenting day to day. Right, right. If it's just regular parenting day to day, like oh, you know, you you were harsh on this time, you you know, you spark them, those little things. But if it become like things like you know, sexually, you know, sexual abuse or you know, more physical abuse, emotional abuse, that, that deep things, then you know, you guys might want to get help, and you might not want to get, you might actually want to get help for the child themselves. Because they might be locked up in trauma and not even saying anything. The Lord mm -hmm. will help us. And the most important thing, again, like Pastor said, is the person of the Holy Spirit. We can overemphasize that. You will be amazed at what the Holy Spirit can mm -hmm. do for us. If only we we'll just let him lead us. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, so um, I know we'll not be able to take all the questions that that have come in. But if you drop your question, we'll be able to share with it to next week which is the final episode of Healthy Relationship Series. I'm so excited. Okay, so this question is- Oh, my would take some to ignite. 
Yes. Oh, we might even take some to ignite. Thank you for that, Pastor Tiger. Okay, so is it okay to date someone uh, with kids if I don't have kids of my own? What if I'm not a good parent? That's the question. Okay. Pastor Tega, it's you. <laughs> okay. So uh, actually, this is going to connect to the question that we just answered, right? Okay. I will advise... Because as Pastor people were just saying the other time, um, if you know you're not ready to marry someone that is single parent with kids, if you know you're not ready, please don't. If you know you're not ready to love like Jesus. Yes, if you're not ready, uh, that's what I'm saying. Because a single parent comes with a package. If you're not ready with, um, it, it's going to involve a whole lot of stuff. So that's where it comes again, the leading of God. That's where it comes you letting your leadership know. Pastor, I think Pastor actually made a, a, a the other day, I think his last message before he traveled, he was saying that there's a sister that wanted to marry a brother and the brother already had a kid. And he asked her, sister, will you be able to love this child mm -hmm. like yours? So he said, and they were dating. If I don't, if I can, if I can remember, I think where they were dating, the action of the, of the of the woman just showed that she can't she wasn't ready she wasn't ready because if kids are involved um there's something that we should all understand once you're an adult already 18 and above that know that your life that you're living you're not living for yourself alone you're living for everybody around you most especially kids that are looking onto you because the kids are watching you those are under they are looking at you yes if i i am i love this girl she's beautiful um I really want her, but there is a but in her life. The but is that she she she's a single parent. She have a child. Ask yourself if you're ready to love that child like your own. Then yes, I will encourage you to go. But if you're not ready to love that child like your own, if you don't see that child like a gift for you, I've seen people marry a single parent and they love the children like their own. I've seen it. Where I've also seen a, a, a situation by people want to get married to uh, a somebody that they can't cope with the children from the previous marriage. Insecurity was playing in there. Anytime the, the spouse go outside, they feel like they are connecting with their ass. And whenever the children come, they see them as rivaling, uh, like as the arrival. So if you, they, there's the, the red flag is always, or the marks are always there, or the, I don't know how to put it, the signs are always there. So I will advise you both sides, if you see you're dating someone and is a single parent, you know that you're not ready. Don't go into that marriage and damage the child. It's not about you and your so-called the, the husband or wife to be. The child that is involved now needs to come in, needs, needs, the child comes first. I, I will say this child, the life of that child, because two of you can go into that marriage and damage the child's destiny that one is not encouraging at all if you're not ready please don't go into it and you that have a child and someone is coming to you the signs are there if the person cannot accept your child please don't go into that marriage marriage is not by force it's not by force you, you've been yes god wants you to get married if you really desire god will bring you a man like Gio said, somebody was somebody had a four, four kids, and a man that has never been married before, don't have don't have a child, was craving to get married to somebody that has four kids. If you really desire to marry, go to God, ask God to bring your own husband, and God will bring you your own husband or your own wife that will love your children because those your children they are part of you. They are part of you. So get married to somebody that will accept your package. Amen. Pastor Tega is obviously very passionate about this subject. <laughs> Pastor Bimba, no, no, because I've seen, right. yes, I've yeah. seen I've seen cases whereby um, my mother happened to be one of them. My mother happened to be wow. yes, I can see yes, it's I think I'm seeing it. I'm very passionate yeah. about that. My mom, my mom happened to be one of such. The mom was married before. And uh, it, it, she happened to want to get married to a man that has never been married before, a man that does not have children. My mom went through hell mm. because the man could not accept my mom. Yeah. I mean, I think the, 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 the thing is parenting itself is a, it's a, it's a hard job. You know, either it's your own child or it's somebody else's child. So if, if you're not ready to take on the responsibility then you might as well just do yourself a favor of not being a parent. 
because it comes with a responsibility. Either you know, you're married to a single person or somebody with a child. So the first question will be, you know, the person should be asking themselves, am I ready to receive this person with, a, with their package? You know, you want the lady, you don't want the package. That cannot happen with okay. somebody that has a child. You want the man, you don't want the package. It cannot happen with somebody already has. You knew that they have a child. So are you able to love a child as your own? Are you able to relate with a child the same way you relate with your own child? If you are not able to do that, then it might just be, you know, a better option for you to look for somebody that fits what you want. And it's not necessarily a bad thing that you can't do it. You know, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Some people know themselves. They know that, well, I won't be able to do this amount. You know, I won't be able to do this. And if you already know you can, then don't, don't do it. But don't say, oh, you know, I want the, the, the spouse, but I just don't want to have to deal with the child. I don't know how that will work. And for the person that owns the child, if you already see the red flag, you already know that this person might not be able to do, don't, don't say, oh, you know, with time he will love you. Mm, don't do that. Just, let, you know, be clear about it. Be clear about your expectation. Be clear about what is going on with you and let the person be honest with you. And if you know it's not going to go, everybody can, you know, just go peacefully on their own path. It's hard enough, you know, to raise your own child, let alone raising somebody else's child. So it's, it's I, I believe that you need a kind of special grace to be able to do that. And if you know you're not grace in that area, then don't go into it. Wow. Grace for the race. So there, there, there is a special grace for what we're talking about. Okay. We have room for one question. And then we'll, you know, we'll start to round up. And this one is my last, this one, the person says, my last relationship was a mess. A friend said I need to establish boundaries with ladies from the start, but I don't want to appear mean. What do I do? And what boundaries are okay for a young Christian man? Um, let's start with Pastor Bimba. Thank you so much. So the question is, the last relationship was a mess. His last relationship. That. Okay, and because of that, he's trying to set boundaries. His friend told him that they think the problem he has is he, he doesn't set boundaries with, with women right off the bat. Okay. But he doesn't want to appear like he's too harsh. Okay. Because that might look like a red flag. Right. Who will, okay. You know, okay. I mean, it, it's, it, uh, it depends on the kind of mess he's talking about. Because first, we'll, let's find out what is the mess about. Is this something that is self-inflicted? Is it something that is because of, you know, coming from the other people? So we just, if you say your last relationship, is it just the last one or your previous relationship? So if it's from previous relationship, then maybe you need, you want to look inward first. Okay. If there's something that you are doing that you need to change, that you need to work on before you even think of going into the relation, another relationship. Because sometimes people jump, you know, there's different kind of personality. You know, there are some people that they can be by themselves, you know, they're kind of dependent. And when they fit, when they end a relationship before they allow themselves heal, they jump into yeah, the next mm -hmm. So they don't really have the time to process what has happened. Because with everything that happened, you should be able to self-analyze, you mm -hmm. know, what happened? How did I contribute to this situation? What could I have done differently, you know, to get a different result? So once you self-analyze and you see what you have done, there is, there is always two sides to a story. So it cannot, it cannot always be, oh, it's that person that did something, it's that person that did something. What did you do to contribute? What can you do? Okay, let's, let's say the person reacted that way. What can you, what could you have done to avert that or to make it, you know, get a different result, you know? And if I have already analyzed that and I see, you know, some mistakes and things that I could have done, it doesn't necessarily mean that you did something wrong. But like I said, that you could have done better. So once I settle that, and then I could now begin to look into the other person. But I can't change how somebody else is relate with me, but I can change how you know, I, I receive it. So what am I trying to say? I can't control what you do to me, but I can control how I react to it. So if, and that's where the boundary center they're talking about comes in. By the time you already self-analyze, you know what you want to do, you know what you can do, you know what you don't want, then it helps you to be able to set any boundaries you may want to set. And then when you're not talking about certain battle from the beginning, again, I don't know the full story. So it's a bit um, harder for me to like give straight advice on that. But I would not just 
you will set boundary, but I won't meet a lady and immediately I'm saying, okay, we're not going to do this. Thing. If you come with all those Moses law, then I might not even want to have a date with you. Because... <laughs> okay, but 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 Pastor me, but what? And that's what he's trying to say. Like he doesn't want yeah. to appear me. But what are boundaries that a Christian man should have? Should have. So yeah. it depends on what area of his life he's talking about. So if you are talking about maybe just going out with someone you want, as a Christian, you already know what you will not do. For example, if I'm a, as a child of God, I know I'm not going to club. So if you want us to go clubbing, then that may be something that, you know, we, we will not be able to agree on. So if, again, if somebody else wants to go clubbing, and I know that's not for me, and now you are finding yourself clubbing because you are trying to match up with that person, then you don't really know who you are. You don't really know what you want. So things like that, I can set boundary on. And from beginning, you already know where I belong. Where I belong. If that yeah. person says we need to go clubbing, you know, blah blah blah, I could just tell you that, oh yeah, I don't do clubbing. This is what I do, and this these are the other fun I like to have. And spend time to actually know each other, know what each other likes, and you know, find common grounds. Do you like to watch movies? Go watch movies. There are so many other fun things that could be done. So that's where the boundary setting comes in. So I think it's about knowing what your values are. What the person's values are and see if your values align. align. If it doesn't align, then maybe that's not the right person for you. Thank you. And don't be afraid to move on, you know. Don't be afraid. Thank you, Pastor Bimba. Pastor Gar. Yeah, I was just about I was just about to say that you have to um, uh, communicate your values. So you said you had a mess from um previous relationship. It could be as little as uh, I'm a family-oriented person. Mm -hmm. and you you don't want to see families around mm -hmm. it could be that i'm a social person and you are uh in person so deep diverse things that makes people to be happy in diverse ways. so that's why it's always good to communicate and people always say, after god the next thing in marriage or relationship is communication mm -hmm. and communication and uh, there's something that pastor people also said the, the best step to healing is self-evaluation if you can always see yourself in the situation and see how, even whether right or wrong, to see how you perceive and how you communicate, how you relate it, it takes two to tangles. It, see how your own parts in every kind of thing that is happening around you, it brings healing. And after you heal and you're about to enter into this new relationship, treat everybody personal. Don't bring your past package into the new relationship. Mm. So when you put your last package aside, because you assume that everybody is different. Last time, let's assume he's a man. Last time was uh, was Monica. Now I'm with comfort. Let's treat comfort. But comfort will bring uh, comfort to my life. But once you have to communicate, communicate your values. So, and there comes also mutual respect and understanding. It's very key in marriage. Learn if you love somebody, you want to respect them, you want to respect their boundaries, you want to respect their values. So, we both communicate them. I remember when I met my husband, we both communicate. I said, I am a family oriented person, I'm the firstborn, I love my siblings, they're going to come around. What about you? Do you love people? Yes, yeah, so yeah, well, the same thing. I love my family, I don't play with family. So, we had that understanding, so we don't cross boundaries. So when it comes to family issues, we talked about money. There are a lot of things. Communicate your values is very, very important. So treat everybody that comes around you. When you treat them the same, put your past package behind. This is a new... Even God said, he said, behold, I will do a new thing. So open your mind. Be mind open your mind. Be open-minded and let God do what he wants to do in this new relationship. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Tega. Um, I know we've hit 12 already, but today has been such a blessing. Uh, if you're watching, thank you so much for joining us. Before we round up, we will let uh, Pastor Bimbo and Pastor Tega give us like the final words for this episode. Pastor Bimbo. Thank you so much um, for the time. Thank you for having us on. Um, I just want to say to everyone watching uh, that, you know, God is still in the business of helping people is still in the business of healing people, is still in the business of you know, instructing people if only we allow him. With all that we have said today, what one thing, the one word that I just want to leave you with is allow the person of the Holy Spirit in your life. And that will make a whole lot of difference for you. We you know it's not being over spiritual, it's just the necessary help that we need. So please is the comforter, it can help you. It can there's nothing that is too small, you know, to 
bring to him. And one thing that I'm learning more and more mm -hmm. every day is that, you know, we have to move from this sense of, you know, from the realm of our senses to the sense, you know, for, to allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us. Because a lot of us, we think we are wise, we know what we want, and we are, you know, we are smart people, we know what we want. We have our things lined and everything, but we have to align all those things, you know, with what the Holy Spirit wants us to do. And it becomes most, much easier when we just allow him to lead us. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I think I still have um, the same advice uh, in the same line with Pastor Alaruwaju. Uh, uh, well, first of all, thank you so much, uh, Sister um, Biodu, for having us. God bless you. And thank you for what you're doing. The Lord will increase you on every side Amen. and bring peace and comfort to your home. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, I want to say, find God, Amen. know God, and you will find yourself, and you will know yourself. Amen. If you know yourself, you'll be able to handle any kind of relationship that comes around you. You'll be able to separate yourself from events. Most of the things that happen in relationship, they are just events. So you separate yourself from those events, and events happen time come and time going when you know god you find god you find yourself you'll be able to handle everything that comes around you because you have the person of the holy spirit directing you controlling you becomes your compass that is my own advice god help us wow <laughs> thank you so much pastor tega um you said something so profound you said many of these things are events you need to be able to separate yourself and mm -hmm. that was that that was that was such a light bulb moment mm -hmm. and pastor bimbo reiterating this holy spirit help um i'm really hoping that everyone who's watching will take it seriously and it's not just about running to the holy spirit when you need help it's ha recognizing him just as a part of your life yeah. so that you don't even have to run to him like exactly. the moment something is going wrong he's like boom exactly. he's reminding you or he's telling you to work on something because so many times we're like this person did something wrong and the holy spirit is like uh you do the same thing mm. <laughs> it's a change so um Thank you so much, Maz, for joining us. If you're watching, don't miss next Saturday's uh, relationship series. Uh, our pastor, Pastor Joseph Sidri, is going to be on. And you know, whenever he's here, he's going to drop and to learn so much. Uh, God bless you all. Before we go, I'm going to share again the details of Ignite so that we don't miss it. Thank you and God bless you. People that you need to meet, you have not met them. I speak over your life. You will connect people that matter to your next level. Prepare to embark on a transformative journey of self-discovery and empowerment at Ignite Relationship Conference. This year's theme, Regeneration, God's Technology for Restoration. This will be an explosive two days event designed to kindle your passion for healthy relationships. You don't marry a man whose leadership you cannot submit to for the rest of your life. Because there is no point saying yes, I do to him. Then you get into marriage, then you say, you know, you cannot lead. What were you thinking when you were caught him? Because marriage is a lifetime. Wedding is an event. So don't get fixated about wedding. Personal growth and financial prosperity. For this conference, we want to learn purpose. Then we are fed. Some of you that are yet to marry, we are fed where you marry. We are fed the programs you do. We are fed your career in life. We are fed where you live. We are fed how you talk because your purpose is very important. Then you want to learn from this conference, your capacity. There will be a diverse lineup of speakers, facilitators, and experts in various fields, which will include panel discussions. There's a breakup in relationship or when um, courtship fail, it is always an opportunity for you to evaluate yourself. You'll have the opportunity to explore a wide range of topics from nurturing relationship with God to cultivating self-care practices in order to deepen your connection with your partner, family, and community. You'll also gain invaluable insights into effective financial management and guidance to a purposeful path for your career. This event will be hosted by the Holy Ghost Christian Center, North America, located at 1323 Burnett Avenue, Union, New Jersey, on Friday, April 5th at 6.30 p.m., and Saturday, April 6th at 8.30 a.m. Don't miss your chance to be a part of this free life-changing event. For more information, please check out our website at www.hccnj.org or follow us at HGCCNJ on Instagram and Facebook. Reserve your spot today and be transformed at Ignite! 
Hey, man. You've heard all the details about Ignite 1323 Burnett Avenue is where the miracles is going to happen. So please don't forget to join us and come early so you can register early enough before you get in for the event. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Pastor Chaga, Pastor Bimba, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for thank having you. us. Have a God bless you. Bye, everyone. See you in church tomorrow. Bye. Bye.